Hey everyone, so we're on to um, section 8.2 of chap chapter 8, so section 2 of chapter 8. Uh, continuing with photosynthesis, now we're going to get into some of the mechanisms behind how photos uh, photosynthesis actually works. Um, so I just wanted to mention to you that I'm going to do this in, in two parts. So this one will be the first part. I'm going to do it in two parts because I don't want to get cut off in the middle of it because the actual um, process of light reactions can get a little complicated, so I'd like some, some time to go slower there. For now, we'll talk about light and how uh, the chloroplast reacts to light and how the photosystem, which is the basic unit of photosyst uh, photosynthesis, uh, works. Okay, so bear with me here as we uh, start an introduction. We talked about in class uh, basically this, uh, this concept of the electromagnetic spectrum. What this is is a, a series of, of energies. Uh, so all of the um, all the electromagnetic spectrum shown here uh, is energy in different forms. Essentially, what that means is that the energy is going to consist of different wavelengths. Okay, so you have your short wavelengths over here and your longer wavelengths over here, with uh, visible light being smacked out in the middle. Now, the longer uh, I should say shorter um, wavelengths are on this side, and that includes gamma rays, X-rays, and UV rays. We talked about uh, some of the, the ways that these uh, short wavelengths can damage uh, cells. So they can damage your DNA, they can damage proteins, and rip apart the membrane of your cells. Obviously a, a bad thing. Uh, that is because those shorter wavelengths that, you know, look kind of like this, uh, basically have more energy. When you go over to the, the longer wavelengths of electromagnetic energy, basically what you'll see is uh, something on the order of, you know, these long kind of looping uh, waves, especially with radio waves. Those are pretty long. And they tend not to be as harmful to, uh, to biological macromolecules and biological molecules. Uh, visible light is the little sliver, see it's only a little piece right here, of the electromagnetic spectrum that our eyes interpret as certain colors, right? So uh, if, you're, if you're seeing wavelengths of 400 nanometers, which is you know, obviously very small, uh, your eyes are going to interpret that as purple. You know, conversely, if you're seeing wavelengths of 600 nanometers, your eyes will see that as yellow. And way over here uh, at 700, your eyes will see that as red. This is actually really important for photosynthesis because um, certain wavelengths of light for plants are absorbed better than others, and I'll show you what I mean by that uh, now. We talked about in class how uh, plants are green, right? So um, that's hopefully no no wild discovery for for us, but we can tell you the reason why uh, plants plants are green. So if you take that uh, uh, that visible uh, spectrum, the visible light uh, in the electromagnetic spectrum, you see that you have all the colors here. So the, the chloroplast of a plant cell will be struck by all those wavelengths of right, light, right? Because it's coming from the sun, there's no filter there. All of those wavelengths, with the exception of the green wavelength, are absorbed by the, uh, by the chloroplasts. Okay, so essentially those thylakoids are going to be able to absorb all the wavelengths except green. Uh, some of that green is going to just go straight through the, the chloroplast, right? That's called transmitted light. But uh, a pretty good majority of that green wavelength is going to be reflected. And when it's reflected, basically the reflected light can then enter into our eyes and basically what our, or what our, our minds interpret that as is, is, the, is the green colors, the reflected light. So the reason plants are green is due to the uh, reflection of the green wavelength of light. So they don't, they're not able to absorb that particular wavelength. Um, There are, so that this is essentially for the primary pigment of uh, plant cells. So this is primarily for chloroplast, uh, so it's in the chloroplast. It's primarily for um, chlorophyll. So this is the primary um, light absorbing pigment um, of, of the plant cells. So I'll write pigment too. We talked about this in class as well. There are other uh, pigments so there are different types of pigments besides chlorophyll, and some of those other pigments are able of uh, absorbing different wavelengths of light. So uh, 
We spoke about in class how during the fall season, the cold weather leads to a decrease in chlorophyll um, levels, right? So when you have a lack of this chlorophyll, which um, reflects green light, uh, basically what you, you start to see is uh, all the other different types of pigments that are that, that the plant have. And so you get to see the different uh, wavelengths of light that are reflected by those different pigments. So this is why you get uh, green, or I'm sorry, red, yellow, and orange leaves, right? Because those particular pigments that are still around for a little while longer in the cold season, uh, they they reflect that light. So you, you, your, your mind sees them as different colors, and that's why we get the, the beautiful foliage that we do. Okay, so how is this relevant to photosynthesis? Well, we're going to show you here inside this particular part uh, of the chloroplast. You all know this is the thylakoid. So these are stacks of thylakoids. Basically we're going to be looking at a single thylakoid membrane. So if you're looking at a big thylakoid like this, essentially what we're going to be talking about is this membrane surrounding uh, the structure. So this right here is equivalent to this. These are the same thing except mine is horrible. Uh, so it's a phospholipid bilayer, just like we talked about for the cell membrane, just like the membrane around the nucleus, just like the, the membrane around the, the mitochondria, and it's the same thing. Basically, you get your phospholipid here, this phospholipid structure, and it's a bilayer, so you get phospholipid here, and phospholipid here, okay? Same idea. Now, you also know that there are membranes embedded in uh, uh, there, are, there are proteins embedded in membranes, right? So uh, this purple guy right here is a protein. Very similar to the transport proteins that allow you know, sugars and salts to cross the membrane. Except this, uh, this protein is not a transport protein. It is a protein that's involved in photosynthesis, in the light reactions of photosynthesis. Um, it's called a photosystem. Okay, so bear with me here. A photosystem is made of two parts. Protein, the purple part there, and two pigments. Pigments like chlorophyll. Right, so I can draw from here and say an example is chlorophyll. Okay. So what happens in this photosystem, this this basically this protein embedded in the membrane. Well, light's going to come in and it's going to strike this green part right here. The green part is the pigment. Okay, So this green part is, say, chlorophyll. What happens in chlorophyll is it gets really excited. Um, it, gets, it gets really excited when it hits light. Not excited like you are when you're in biology class, but um, excited in that the electrons go from a ground level, low energy, to a high energy, okay? So essentially it goes from ground to excited, ground to excited. Uh, that excitement, I guess, for lack of better words, is contagious, right? So it spreads uh, that excitement to the next chlorophyll, okay? So essentially there's this little wave going on right here. As soon as light strikes the photosystem at this chlorophyll, at this pigment, it gets excited, then the one next to it gets excited. Ultimately, it's going to excite this special chlorophyll right here, the special pigment, um, what's in what's called the reaction center. Now this special chlorophyll right here is going to essentially give its electron, shown right here, to this electron acceptor. This is the whole point of a, of a photosystem, basically. So it's a, it's a membrane protein that when it receives light, the chlorophyll in it gets excited, ultimately exciting this special chlorophyll here, which gives its electron to this primary electron acceptor. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff here, but um, understanding this basic concept of the photosystem is, is pretty essential, okay? We'll go over this in class. We're going to go over this in the next screencast when we actually talk about the light reactions process. So if you know it, if you don't know it yet, don't worry about it. We, we'll go over this again in class, and we'll, we'll practice this, okay? But just to reiterate one last time, light comes in from the sun. 
it's going to excite this chlorophyll here, whatever pigment this is right here, the chlorophyll is going to get excited. This one then gets excited, ultimately exciting this chlorophyll right here. This special one, this chlorophyll in the reaction center, is going to then give its electron to this primary electron acceptor. Okay, so only within this reaction center, this essentially this square right here, are there any exchanging of electrons. Pretty, pretty basic. We'll, we'll cover this again in class, but I want you to understand it because the photosystem is the basic unit of photosynthesis. Okay, so it's very important. It's occurring in the thylakoid membrane. Right, so when I draw this, this horrible little thylakoid membrane right here, what I'm essentially drawing is this phospholipid bilayer with proteins embedded in it. Okay, so their drawing is, is obviously much more better. Much better, I should say. Okay, so that's it for the first part of 8.2. Uh, I'll do another screencast for eight, uh, the second part of 8.2, which is the actual sequence of events inside the light reactions. Okay, so stay tuned for that, I guess.